Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Zoo Sarasota. So glad that you guys could join me for once again, as we kind of talk about what we have recently done over here. There is quite a bit of a time gap since the last episode of this series, and that's because, again, I just wanted to let you guys know, I don't want this series to be a regularly occurring thing. It doesn't really match my vibe. I want this to be kind of like my Theramashadi. I want this to be like my passion project that I work on in the background. My Orwell Zoo, my stuff like that. Uh, and I think what I have today is pretty solid for you guys. So as we kind of make our way in here, in case if you guys are not aware, Zoo Sarasota at the Palms is my big Florida project. It's the one that I am super excited about. You guys will notice some things might have changed in here, mostly path work and stuff. I actually don't think the path work saved. That's a little bit of a shame. Either way, but um, yeah, it's kind of like my passion project, my Florida project, in case it's, if you guys are unaware. I go to Florida zoos kind of regularly. I have family down there and I tend to visit them a lot. Excuse this, this is part of like an upcoming episode. But, um, yeah, I tend to visit them a lot, and I tend to visit the zoos down there a lot. Really, a whole lot of inspiration. Uh, so, in the last two episodes, we kind of covered everything over here. Uh, I believe Carlos is working on, like, a whole new pack of, like, dinosaur skeletons. So, I'm holding off on the Wings of Asia area uh, to work on those. But we could pop in here and just see what's happening. I still want to work on getting a Fly River Turtle mod out. It's not perfect for now, but I do want to work on that eventually. But we do have the Mekong Giant Catfish and Perun Sharks in here. Both really incredible animals, and we also have one of the only birds in here so far, as it is supposed to be an aviary. The White Stork mod by Ginger. He actually just remastered it, uh, so that should be out relatively soon. But yeah, it's just a really, really beautiful habitat in here. But that's not what we're talking about today. We are going to pop over here. So I've been working a lot harder on the Florida section and um, it's been going pretty good. Uh, so this is also something that will come in the next episode or so. Maybe not the next episode because I'm kind of tired of the Florida section. I kind of want to work on some primates next. So that might be what we work on, but Florida has been chugging along nicely. I still love this sign up here. I gotta do more banners like that, uh, but I'll probably do a new banner with every additional kind of like section. So I gotta do one for the actual like aviary, but I'm not confident in like, you see how they have like the background in there? I'm not confident in the background for that just yet. So I'm gonna hold off on that. But I want to do that for every section, but the primates, which is probably going to be our next section, will be next. So keep your eyes out for that. Uh, here's just a few little signs I whipped up using, like, you know, the small billboards. I haven't actually put down anything just yet. This is probably going to be like a zoo event sign or something like that. Uh, so keep that in mind. My dog wants to get out. Oh, that's sad. Um... Okay, yeah, hold on. I'm just gonna get us to like a comfortable position and then I'm gonna make a quick little cut so the little doggy can get out. All right, sorry about that little jump cut. The dog is very needy. Um, but you might notice from this shot over here the rosette spoonbill and you'll notice that our flamingos, which are right there, are not currently updated to 1.13. It's insane that we're on like update 13. I started modding in 1.4. Oh my gosh, I've been doing this for way too long. Okay, either way. Uh, but that's kind of why they're floating. I will make it a point to update all that stuff soon. Uh, it's just I haven't had the time recently. I've been getting very busy. It's lucky I can even get videos out anymore. But um, yeah, I just hope you guys enjoyed this shot. You could already see that there's so much stuff, like so much new stuff happening back there. And we'll actually get there in just a little bit, but we're going to continue down this old pathway. This is always the stuff that I love to do in this series, I guess. Uh, it's just kind of going back where we originally were and checking out like all the stuff that we might have missed in the last episode and seeing if you guys can notice anything else that has changed. Uh, but yeah, this is just so gorgeous in here. I don't know. It's just so awesome to see all this stuff. Except for the flying flamingos, that is a little sad, but oh well, what can you do? 
continuing over here, this is kind of like the section we worked on on the last episode. So not really much has changed. We kind of still have like all the same signage. Like these are all like the beautiful pictures from like, you know, the Zoopedias and kind of like some from Reddit and stuff. I credit everyone who I kind of like stole some of the pictures from. Uh, so you can check out some of these really awesome people. Mostly modders because, you know, just why not? But that's really all we have over here, plus the little burrowing owls. I did team up with uh, Phonetic, so we should be able to get the gopher tortoise in here soon. Uh, he just needs to clean it up a little bit more, but we will have at least moving animals in here, so that'll be kind of fun. Uh, what's over here? Our skunks are still doing their little skunky thing. I love that little whatever you call it, the little egg carton. That's still one of my favorite pieces I've made for any exhibit. Also, this is just a pretty solid exhibit too. I'm always super happy with this one because it does such a great job with such a little space, especially for a skunk, which is an animal that don't really get too big spaces in zoos. I know at least at Zoo Tampa, they have a relatively large area, but they share that with, um, with like sandhill cranes, I think. So, giving these guys the opportunity to have their own little habitat is really fun. And, like, just working a lot more with smaller details is so rewarding, especially when you see, like, all the tiny little things that happens in here, like the little trowel right over there, like the little turned over pot. Uh, you have the little enrichment thing right there. I just really love that stuff. It's great. But, you can move down here schmoozy on down and we could actually start to see our next habitat right there i also love this little part like it's so minor it's so needless but it's just so cool um just this little get barrier wall it's just a very steep plaster hill and just with all the detail with all the decals in here it really does turn out super awesome and i love the background which is concrete because it would be assumed that this would be a little bit more expensive than the concrete. So you don't really need to decorate the back all too much. Just fun stuff like that. So making our way over here, we have a very classic Floridian animal. This is a Florida panther habitat. Uh, this habitat is kind of based off of Zoo Miami's with a mix of the Naples Zoo in here. You can see our little cougar cruising around right under there. So, you guys might be noticing that there isn't too much climbing area in here. Uh, a lot of the times when you do find, like, a mountain lion habitat, uh, you'll have a lot of climbing area for them. You'll have, like, all these very intricate climbing frames. Uh, that's not really the case with Floridian zoos. Uh, I know Tampa just redid their habitat for their Florida panthers, and they have a really lovely climbing frame in there. But... Overall, Florida panthers honestly don't need too much climbing space, or at least their habitats aren't designed with that in mind. So I have just a little hammock over here. I might try and make something all throughout here using like dead branches and stuff. Uh, just bring in a little bit more organicness in here. But they really don't require that much stuff. It's very interesting. Uh, so I'm just going to pop outside here back to the exterior of the habitat because... As a zoo guest, we probably shouldn't be entering the cougar habitat, but it's just a really solid habitat, and I really do love, like, all the foliage in here. Uh, it was just such a fun little challenge just getting all this foliage to work and feel nice and organic while still maintaining the idea that this is a zoo habitat, because it's a very fine line of balance when you're building a lot more realistically. I don't know. It's very interesting. They also have a nice little pool over here, so the idea for this entire habitat is that it would be on rotation with the florida black bears which really aren't a real subspecies uh but florida likes to give themselves as many subspecies as possible there is even debate about the florida panther not really even being a real subspecies but regardless um i'm not here to start politics i'm just here to make like cool habitats for florida animals so these guys have all this area that they would rotate with the American black bears. And I also have the startings of a backstage over here. So um, ignore like the man behind the curtains. But I kind of ripped this from Foxborough Zoo when Crocs came in. Uh, so this would be the cougar holding. We only have one cougar in here. And I do want like some shift gates so that this could also be used for bears if need be. But that's really what's happening over there. 
Um, I kind of like these walls too. I like the little windows that we did on the top there. It's pretty fun to do that. And all the gutter work too. It's been really rewarding just to be able to do all that stuff. Uh, looking out over here. Uh, you could start to see some views of our next habitat back over there. Uh, super proud of that one in particular. Maybe we could see like... I think it's relatively well hidden actually. Yeah, you don't really get too many views of that habitat just yet. Which I think kind of works. Um, usually I like to have that area where, like, you can see another habitat just, like, peeking out of the grass or something. But, I don't know. I kind of like the idea that this is all just native Florida brush. Uh, we'll talk about the pine trees in a little bit. We'll talk about that once we actually do get to that section. Uh, but we have one other section in here. And this is probably one of my favorite things I've done in a while. This is... Our little herptarium area so this would essentially be all of these native Florida snakes maybe I could do like a frog or two but I've only decorated one terrarium so far I will go throughout all of these and start to add more because it was really fun doing that one but for now I don't want to think too much about it but I don't know I just really do like this building because it's very much based off of the cougar and black bear ha building uh, that you get over at Miami Zoo. Uh, mixed with a little bit of the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. They have a lot of really awesome education. A lot of awesome theming in there. Uh, if you guys are ever at Naples Zoo. Please bundle it with the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. I was able to talk with some of the people who work there. And it's just a really, really incredible institution. You never would think it would be there. But I honestly think it's so much more rewarding than the zoo. But little Florida rant over. <laughs> uh, this is essentially just a whole bunch of terrariums that you would find. Like native Florida species. Like black rat snake would be one of these. Red rat snake. You could do like Florida coppermouth or something. Uh, but yeah, that's really it. Still love it. So it's so cool. Uh, that is not supposed to be right up there. That's just like the like sunset. It's actually beautiful. Hold on. Oh, man. Now it really does feel like Florida. I would never live in Florida. If you live in Florida and you like it, honestly, good on you. Could not be me, though. That is not the life for me. But I'd love to visit there. and It's so beautiful. Uh, I threw a few leaves on top of here just so it feels like, you know, uh, you have, like, the palms and, like, the fronds of that palm tree kind of falling down. So I thought that'd be a cool thing to see as you're looking up to, like, that skylight right there. Uh, especially when it's raining, this would be, like, such a cool building to get, like, you know, trapped in, I guess. I don't know. So I love that. It's a really fun project that I was able to put together. Uh, I'll even show you guys a little bit of behind the scenes over here. I'm hoping to do something kind of like this. Where you just got this one kind of, like triangle weird little shape building like a Y shape building yeah uh, and then you can see the bears over here I started work on this I'll show it off a little bit later uh, once we actually do work on the bears Jorno finally released like the um, actual mod for the black bear so that's gonna be so fun to see but I think I'm gonna start to start start to start yeah that makes sense um, begin to bring in the manatees over here uh, I have so much more space, and I could bring it out there all the way, uh, but I think I want to start putting a cap on this soon. There's still some other species I gotta get through. There's like a whole bunch of small ones, but I think those will come in the form of the elevated pathway over here. So ideally, you would walk through like the whole Florida section, and then you would end up over here. Uh, this is where we're going to continue the tour as we check out the next two animals on this little section. Uh, so you have this boardwalk, and I have to say, huge shout out to Hexabit, yes, uh, for the null path mod. Uh, so you can see that if I do have elevated paths over here, if you look at them from below, you have all that schmutz in there. No one wants that schmutz. That is useless. That is garbage. Uh, these are fully functional paths that are completely null, that are elevated. So hopefully soon you can see some guests kind of like popping over here. I'll actually plop down a educator right here. So you could actually see that, yeah, they can actually use these pathways. And it's just so awesome. I just love this look over here. I think I got to start to add some like bins and trash cans up here because this is kind of like a, um, 
kind of like a boring elevated walkway. There's not much happening up here, so I gotta fix it up a little bit more. But here's our next habitat. Do let me know if you can see some of these guys. There's one right there. This is the red wolf habitat. Red wolves used to be native to much of eastern North America. Unfortunately, their population numbers have absolutely been decimated over the past few years. Or, well, over the past many years. But recent conservation efforts, thanks to, like, so many awesome zoos. I know Zoo Tampa is kind of what I based this habitat off of. But there are a whole bunch of other zoos, if you have them at your local zoo. They're doing a lot of really awesome work with the SSP. So it's just really, really cool just to be able to see this population makeup come back, really. Uh, but it's just one big, relatively large dirt pit. Uh, not really much else that these guys need. There's plenty of room for them to kind of explore. I have two males in here. Uh, I'm going to see what I can do in terms of lore to make that work. But that's what we're working with over here. Their holding is right back there. Uh, so we have a keeper door right there. This could open up. I really need to work on like the mechanics of that door. Not super happy with it, but that would just kind of shift up. That's the same building where the burrowing owls are, as well as the flamingos. So it's very much a multi-purpose kind of building. Very cool to see that. But I really do love this habitat. I'll bring us down in there in just a little bit, just to show off a little bit more of the finer details that you don't really get from above. But this part over here is very much based off of um, Zoo Miami. They have like this entire beautiful elevated pathway. And you get to see so many awesome creatures on it. And it's just so cool. But one of my favorite parts is like a little building where you can actually see bald eagles. Uh, these guys are made by Drac, I believe. They're just very old. Uh, I'm sure we'll get updated ones relatively soon. I apologize for like my netting skills throughout this habitat. They're not really, not really the best. Uh, but making custom aviaries is like one of the worst things to do. I would never tell my worst enemy to work on them <laughs> because they are just very daunting to do. Not my best habitat. I still need to work on like a few different like holding areas for these birds. But this is very standard for any bald eagle habitat. It's like 10 times better than Tampa's because Tampa just has like a grass pit and a few sticks for them. Kind of like the same as Queen Zoo if you've ever been there. So I don't know. It's not the best habitat but I do love the verticality of it. I do love like the fake tree in the middle that's just bright white has like this cool effect juxtaposed with like the rest of the natural greenery just love that stuff uh this would be like a little education area where you could come here kind of like play with like skulls or something i'm not sure watch some dunkachino uh but that's really it my friends for that one Here's just another view of this wolf habitat. There's actually so much that I did. <laughs> I was like so worried that this episode would not be enough for everyone. But looking at everything, we really, really covered a lot of ground. But here's just another view over here. Uh, hopefully we can get like the manatee pools in the background. That would be really awesome to see. Uh, but these are all custom fences. I believe there might be mods in here. I could be wrong. Uh, but I just have like the climb proof fences right over here just for, you know, climb proof sake. Not really sure if the red wolf could actually escape with a unclimb proof fence, but that would be very interesting to see. Here comes the path pack once again to save the day. Uh, I kind of replaced this main path with this beautiful herringbone texture. So it's kind of just like the basic, um, what do you call it? Yeah, it's like this one from base game. Where is it? I swear there was like a base game one. Yep, Herringbone Path. So it's kind of like this one, but just in white. It's so much nicer, so much brighter. I love that stuff. Uh, over here, you actually get the native section. So this is something that both Tampa and Miami have. Uh, they're really the main zoos of reference that I'm using for this entire park. N Naples is getting a few reps in here too, but it's not really as much. Uh, Animal Kingdom. I just haven't been to Animal Kingdom in forever. I would love to go again, but unfortunately it's not in the budget. If you guys want me to see 
see me do some more Animal Kingdom stuff, you guys can fund my trip over there. <laughs> but, um, no, we can actually look out on the Florida Rocklands over here. The Rocklands are probably my favorite biome of Florida because it's just so awesome coming from, like, the northeast to see such beautiful pine trees in, like, this gorgeous swampy atmosphere. It's just really awesome to see just beautiful carnivorous trees like that. I don't know, I just really have fallen in love with this view over here because you have this native pollinator garden kind of ripped directly off of Miami Zoo. And yeah, it's just really, really fun just to be able to work with that. We have these lovely little mud bank walls. Uh, I made these all custom and I just love like the nice organic curves that you get in them. It's just so cool to see that. One of my favorite things over here too is the fallen tree. Uh, this was made before the bark piece came out. Uh, I'm sorry I'm like stuttering over my words today. I don't know what's happening. But if you look up bark, these came in with the uh, tropical pack. Yeah, the tropical pack. Uh, and ideally, I would just sink these in and kind of do like some nice custom like bark pieces. But for the time being, that is way too much work for my tiny little brain. Uh, so I'm just going to say... Yep, these big pieces are fine by me. But yeah, I really do love this. Uh, Miami has something very much like this in like their otter slash American crocodile section. I'm hoping to replicate that too it, with like, you know, my own little style on it. So that's going to be super fun to do. But this is just such like a fun way to go. Um, I don't know. Just looking up this area is so cool. Like looking down this area, it's not really the best. Um... But this would be like the ideal way for you to go. I have one-way signs all throughout here, but you know, people can always go whatever way they want. Again, over here we have this little structure that I made a while ago. Uh, this would essentially look back over the flamingo pool with our mysterious floating flamingos once again. And over here you can actually get a nice ground level view of our red wolves once again and we'll actually go in the habitat this time because i do want to show off a little bit more of that detail talk about the pieces that i used uh, but i'm using like a mix of the grassland rocks i'm using some like uh temperate rocks too i'm using the new leaf litter that gives a really nice dirty effect to here that i really want to capture uh i use dirty water in here because it would get very muddy because the wolves would love to run about them uh, I have like some fallen over branches, some decals all throughout here, and a whole bunch of different grasses just to show off. Like this is just to show you guys the techniques to get like this kind of effect. But mixing that in and getting a little bit more greener as I get to like the thicker brushed areas. So you could see in like this area over here, I really don't use too much of that bright green buffalo grass. Instead, I'm using a lot more of the dry versions, the parched versions. I'm using a lot more twigs, sticks, rocks over there. But once you hit like this little grove over here, I use like the bush over here. I start to use like the ponytail palms. And especially once you hit like the barrier of the fence, you can see I'm going ham with like that beautiful green buffalo grass, especially over here too. Um, I really wanted this area to feel nice and thick because there's really no reason for this area down here to get trampled on so that foliage would just be able to grow and grow and grow. But yeah, that's really it. Um, I'm super happy with this so far. Let me know what you guys want to see next because I could try and talk to, um, uh, who is it? Who is it? Carlos. I could try and talk to Carlos and be like, yo, you mind swinging me a few like dinosaurs? Uh, so I could continue on this section over here. What I really want to do though is start the primate section. And I'll probably do like one or two habitats for like the orangutan. I would love to bring in the gibbon, maybe the siamang. Definitely some modded ones like the colobus and stuff. Uh, but I would essentially do that all throughout here. And as the path kind of continues, I would bring that to, like, the rest of the zoo. So I definitely want, like, my Australian section. I want, like, a nice big African section. Asia section would be kind of like a continued version of the aviary. But that is really it, my friends. That's, like, it, oh my gosh. I can't believe, like, you know, over a month's work. 
kind of can be summarized in a 30 minute video but thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it i know so many of you guys were looking forward for this series coming back and i really hope it paid off like i hope you guys say oh man the wait was worth it because it was so fun just to be able to put this all together it's just such a fun 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 build I don't know. And it really helps me get connected with Florida again because I haven't been in quite some time. I'm going in a bit. That's exciting. I'm going to bring back all the inspiration I can. Uh, but yeah, just being able, being able to see all of our animals exploring over here. You'll see a little bit more of that in the cinematics after this. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you guys did enjoy it, share this video as much as you can. Be like, oh my gosh, check out what Leaf made. Wow, that's so cool. That's so crazy. Uh, but yeah, it really does help to show support for the channel. Uh, but yeah, we'll end it right over here. I want to get like that perfect view where we could see like everything that we've been working on so far. Uh, because yeah, the zoo is coming quite a long way. We finally got some, like, heavy hitters in here, and I can't wait to get to, like, the manatees and all that stuff. It's gonna be so cool, guys. Thank you guys so much one last time for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Take care, and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Goodbye now.